This just in. Apparently there's a service manual which will tell you how to set the timing, needle bar height, and all other adjustments on sewing machines without needing to use trial and error. Let's find out more. So the first website we're going to talk about is singerish.com, s-ish.com. This one uh, is put together by a man named Mark, and he's been fixing sewing machines for a lot longer than me. And uh, this gentleman has a lot of resources available, so he's put together a few things like, you know, looking at vintage sewing machines and that sort of thing. But the real uh, big part of his website that he's still working on, and it's going to take him a long time to get all these uploaded, are the um, service manuals that he has available. So he's putting a ton of service manuals on this website and it's all free um, and he doesn't ask for anything in return he's just taking his time his personal time to put all these manuals up on his website to provide us with the ability to service our machines so this is a great research, this is a great tool for someone who owns one of these machines or someone who fixes sewing machines. So you can download these PDFs or you can look at them on the webpage and I'm just showing you here, We're just I just picked one at random to kind of look through and see what kind of stuff is in the service manual. We'll take a look at a service manual a little bit later on in this video, but um, you know, you can see that he's got a ton of different ones in here and he's adding them all the time to give you more and more to look at and in fact um, if there's one that's not here that you need um, you can become a patreon to support this web page and I'm sure he will send you a file if you need a file um, for me personally I had been purchasing these service manuals on Etsy or on eBay from various individuals and for me at you know ten fifteen dollars a pop it's worth it to do a patreon uh, subscription to him for any amount of money really because the number of manuals that are available and uh, the variety that he has that he puts up for free is so much value that supporting him via Patreon, I think, is a, an awesome thing. And see, he's got it right there. You can click on his Patreon. And I believe that he's got a YouTube channel as well, or he will. Um, so that's something you can check into. If it is currently up that YouTube channel I'll put the link down below and then you can see the different levels so he's not asking for much really very little um, I think being a patreon of his is something that's definitely worth the value that he's providing now another free resource you can use to try and find a service manual would be manuals lib and this is where I send a lot of people manualslib.com and you can search for your sewing machine and then see what it has. Um, in this case, you know, this one has a, a file here. This is a data sheet. And you can go back and search a little bit less specific search to find maybe some more manuals on this sewing machine. And there you go. You've got an instruction manuals, two, a couple of different ones. You got the data sheet, you know, and then you can see it starts going into other things. So they don't have the Singer 9960 service manual, but they do have a parts list for an older Singer machine. You can see Manuals Lib is pretty nice as well. You can also download these as PDFs for free. So it's a, it's a very good resource if you're looking for documentation on your old Singer or any uh, sewing machine that they may just happen to have the manuals for. It's not a complete directory, 
but everything on here is free and it's definitely worth a look. I use Manuals Lib quite a bit. And here's an example of a service manual. So this is for a 1591 sewing machine and have you ever had one apart and you're trying to figure out how to rewire the thing because you forgot to take a picture? Well, here's the manual that tells you this is what they used when they worked on these back in the day. So this is for a 1591 and it tells you how to wire up the light and everything to the back of that connector. Some other things in here, you know, service manuals are very useful. They show you, they, some service manuals and, and each brand is different, but this one shows you some exploded views of all the parts that you can take apart. That lamp, I've taken apart those lamps before and they can be a pain. There's the motor, so 1591 has the potted motor that's built in. There's no belt and uh, this shows you how to take all that apart as well. Tells you how to lubricate it. You got the clutch there that you can um, see all the parts to, exploded view for that, for the gear and all that on the handle. And then you have the timing over here. This shows you how to time this machine and it goes through and it tells you, hey, go to figure uh, whatever it is and look at part number J on this drawing. And then you go over to that drawing and look at part J and you can see what that is. In this case, they had the figure 23, but it was actually figure 22. Uh, sometimes you do find errors in these manuals and uh, they don't put out revisions so much when they have small errors like that. It's just, you know, the mechanics figure it out. So you've got all kinds of instructions inside here on how to service your vintage sewing machine. And th these are, like I said, the same instructions that they used back in the day when they worked on them. And then here's a more modern machine. So uh, this is a machine that I'm very intimate with because I recently did a video on it and I also work on these quite a bit. It goes through all these different things, belt tension, the hook, um, the motor of the needle, swing head sideways, setting the needle in relation to the presser foot, all these things. And then each one of those, it goes through and tells you how to do it. So we're gonna check over here your hook timing, so that's an important thing to do. And when you look at these checks, in this case, they want you to put a size 90 needle in the machine, and that gives the gives you like a standard size of needle. And then uh, you can do the, these other things. It does say that the needle needs to be 2.5 millimeters above when you're when you're moving it upwards. Um, and as soon as that hook passes behind, the needle should have moved 2.5 millimeters. And then when it tells you how to do this, it talks about a gauge. And we don't have that gauge, nor are we gonna buy that gauge because we can figure out how to measure that two and a half millimeters without using the special gauge. And that's just something that I do. It's kind of fun to figure out how to do these measurements because I don't buy all the gauges for every single machine. Otherwise I'll be buying gauges every time I do a machine because I, you know, you don't, it's not often that you see the same machine twice. And then you can see that they have a drawing that shows you where the hook position should be a lot of neat stuff in these service manuals and they're very helpful when you're working on a sewing machine. These service manuals are what the factories came up with in order to show the technician how to conduct repairs on the machine. So there are sections that say, um, that tell you how to replace certain parts and then they tell you what alignments are required after you replace those parts. Uh, it tells the technicians how to get inside the machine. So it tells you how to take off the covers of your machines and this is especially helpful in modern machines where you have hidden screws and uh, special screws and you have an order of operations that you have to follow in order to get everything together the correct way. It also will go into doing computer checks. So for computerized machines, this will go in and tell you how to check the various uh, motors and stepper motors and all those things in the computer. Now the unfortunate part about this is unless you're an authorized or affiliated with an authorized reseller, reseller of these machines, you won't have access to the codes. Uh, if there's a password in the machine in order to get in, you won't have access to that. And the, the, these manuals typically won't tell you or they'll tell you what the first password was and then it's changed since then. Some machines that are electronic do allow you to go into a special mode where you can test each portion and each stepper motor to make sure that it's doing the right thing. And that's a, it's a pretty cool little test program to go through. What else can you find in the 
in a service manual. So uh, if you look at the really old ones, it's really not a service manual. This is what they gave the people who bought the sewing machine. So it would tell them how to set the timing of their sewing machine and um, as well as showing you how to thread the needle and you know thread the machine. It's, it's pretty amazing that as we progress through time, we're told less and less about our machines and we're able to do less and less fixes, uh, less and less repairs on our own. They all want to, uh, they want you to send it in to their authorized um, service center to have it serviced. These service manuals are a great asset to you if you're going to be working on sewing machines and I highly recommend them. When you have a problem with a sewing machine and you need to set the timing or you need to um, set certain adjustments on there, this is the only way to do that, uh, it, to know exactly what the settings should be. Otherwise, when you're setting things, you're doing trial and error. And then the last thing I really want to talk about is that service manuals are not always 100% correct. And like you saw that there was a, a misprint with the uh, number of the of the, um, there's a misprint with the number of the drawing. Well, they also have incorrect measurements in there. The idea with the timing measurements and all these things is to get you in the ballpark. And then you have to test the machine and uh, do the fine adjustments while you're running fabric through the machine. And I've noticed on a couple of machines, I've set them exactly to what the uh, service manual said, and then I found out I had to go back to where it was. So one thing to keep in mind is if your sewing machine is working great and not having any issues, you don't have to change all the settings because they're not the same as what the service manual says. So let's keep that in mind when you're doing this, uh, is that if your machine is working, you don't need to adjust everything. But I love service manuals especially when there's a machine that's hard to get into, it's difficult to open it up and you can't figure out how to go about getting inside that machine. Service manuals are really the ticket to get you in there. All right, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Um, thank you so much to my Patreons who have been supporting this channel. And I highly recommend that you go over there and you support Mark on the Singerish uh, Patreon because that service that he's providing to us is huge. Um, it's an awesome thing. So go support him and uh, we'll see you next week.